Hello my friends, in this part of my Invoke tutorial series we will dive into the heart of Invoke, the canvas. If you are not familiar with Invoke AI then watch my last video. The goal of this tutorial series is to teach you how you can create amazing image compositions like this. What is the canvas and how to open it? If you see this view then click the X in the upper right corner. Also make sure to select this option here so that your images go to the canvas instead of the gallery. The canvas itself is basically an infinite working space for you to toy with. You could for example render multiple images onto the canvas. Why exactly would you do this? Let me give you an example. I do a right click on this image and select recall metadata and click on remix image. Now Invoke has restored all my previous settings. I remove this and instead I say city, moon. Now we click the bounding box icon and move it to a free space. I place it below here because otherwise it would try to render the old image onto the new image. I select two images and then I click the Invoke button up here. You can see the render progress directly here on the canvas. Now we have two images, we can switch back and forth and select one of the images. I'm selecting this image here because I want to reuse the moon. Now you can click accept. You could also click the floppy disk icon here to save one or both images to the gallery. As I mentioned earlier, I want to extract the moon, so I make a right click and say select object. Now I click some reference point for the vision model to orient on. I hit apply and now the rest of the image is gone. This isn't a perfect cutout but this is only for demonstration purposes what you can do with Invoke AI. By clicking the move tool or pressing A on the keyboard I drag the moon over into the other image. I will place it here. In a moment I'm going to show you how we can merge both images into one by inpainting. But for now click on the layers here and you can see that our moon layer is on top of our city layer. You always have the option to deactivate or activate a layer to see what's beneath. I could also disable this layer here which doesn't make any sense but it's possible. Always make sure you have the right layer selected because now I'm moving the cat image around instead of the moon. I'm going to drag the moon over here and let's resize it. You can press T in order to activate the transform tool. I make the moon a little bit smaller and also you can move it around. As you move objects around you will feel that it's going to snap to the grid which helps in most situations but sometimes you want a more granular movement so if, if that's the case then hold down the control key and move your image where you want it. It doesn't make any sense to put the moon here but let's do it anyway just for demonstration purposes. My next video will be more about amazing image compositions. Now we have to position the bounding box, so I click this button here and I also click up here to fit the bounding box to the active layers. I make the bounding box much smaller because we don't want to render the whole image, just the moon. Also this bounding box will create a much bigger image as you can see here by scaled bounding box. That way you get more details into this part of the image. Now we are going to inpaint. We need an inpaint mask. Lucky for us we already have an inpaint mask layer here. So we activate it. I click here on the brush icon and now I paint over the moon and a little bit a part of the city because we want to blend this in. Whenever you do image to image or in painting then you will see this denoising slider up here in the right corner. For those of you who do not watch my videos on a regular basis yet, a low denoising strength means not much change in the image and a high denoising strength means go crazy. So for now we try 0.55 and let's see what it gives us. As you can see in this render he tries to get a person in here so we need to fix the prompt a little bit. Also I forgot to turn off uh, two Loras down here. This is also contributing to our misery. But apart from that uh, the rest of the moon fits great I think. By clicking on the eye icon down here you can switch between the old version and the current version. I click the discard all icon here and increase the denoising to 0.6 
And let's also modify the negative prompt. Let's add people, man, woman. In the positive prompt, I add building between city and moon here and render it again. This already looks better in the preview. At least it looks like a building. It seems like it tried to create some kind of creature in the building. I think it's because of the Demon Legion Laura that I didn't deactivate here. But in the context of the complete image, it doesn't look that bad. Let's keep it actually. Quick reminder that all the techniques I show you in this video, we are going to utilize in the next video. So this is just a demonstration of techniques really. When you finish with this, Step, always remember to deactivate your masks or delete them. If I decide in a later point of my generation that I actually didn't like the moon in the image, I could deactivate it anytime like this. Let's say you are finished with your composition and now you want to save out the image. First of all, let's bring back our moon again. Then you click up here where it says fit bounding box to layers. Make sure that no layers stick out of the image that you want to save in the end. Otherwise, like this moon here will lead to a much bigger bounding box. And if I save this now, I have a lot of unnecessary parts in my image. You can also position the bounding box manually like we did before when we rendered. So to save the image, make a right click and say save to gallery and then click save bounding box to gallery. If you switch back to the gallery tab, you can see our new image down here. And here on the right is our old image. To start with a fresh canvas, click up here and then select new canvas session. Now I get a security prompt because after you click OK, everything will be deleted from the canvas. I mean, that's not entirely true. You can go to your invoke folder under outputs and images and there you can find all the images. But I don't know when and under what condition this folder gets deleted or cleaned up. So make sure you grab your stuff sooner than later. I have one highlight left in this video. Let's say you have an amazing image like this and your goal is to extend the image, the so-called outpainting. With Invoke, this is pretty easy. Just drag your image in, upload it and then drag it into the canvas and say as raster layer. We click up here to fit the bounding box and then we click over here to select the move bounding box tool. We are going to move it slightly over here. Also what you need is your basic image prompt. If you don't have it anymore or never had it, then copy and paste the image to ChatGPT and ask GPT what it sees in the image while also making clear that you want an SDXL prompt. Now I'm using my default prompt for Cyber Realistic, which I created in my last video. If you haven't seen it, maybe you should watch it. I do the same for the negative prompt and then I copy paste the prompt from ChatGPT up here. I set the denoising strength to 0.6 and also I rendered us two nice images here. It's not bad, but you can see a slight difference in color here and also in the image details. There are several approaches you can do now. You could experiment with denoising strengths, but be careful. Cranking up the denoising strength too much will lead to images that don't blend in the slightest together. As you can see here, a better way to go about this is using an in-painting mask. If you don't have an in-painting mask, then click the plus icon in the upper right corner and select it. And then paint over the new image, but also over parts of the old image. So that way they can blend together. Let's try decreasing the denoising to 0.5 or 0.55 and let's render it. You will need to experiment with this a lot. I like this image here very much. Here's some kind of phoenix or a fire creature and also the rest of the image blends much better together. I accept the image. If you are not satisfied how they blend, then you could create a new in-painting mask, the area that troubles you and then go over it with a lower denoising, like 0.2 or 0.3. Now let's do the same thing for the other side. I delete the in-painting mask and create a new one. And we also paint over like before. I want more variation, so I select four images. So rendering is quite fast here and we can afford the time. 
This looks good. Another dragon. I like this also because it looks like the fire is coming from her. Always take time to zoom out and look at the whole image for both for in painting and out painting. Oh, this here is great. The men are running towards a fight. I, I love it. This is gonna be it. In my next video, we will do a great image composition. So make sure you like and subscribe to this video to support me and also tune in for one of my other videos. Until then, I hope you learned something and happy creating.